how's it going, everyone? I'm your coach. Trying our call or your coach for the San Francisco Swampers, of course. And today, we are doing a team analysis video for week 5 of the Undigo League of Legends. So this week, we are facing the Minnesota Monstrosses, who's coached by Isaiah. And Isaiah is the website creator for this league. If you want to check out the website, it's down in the description of this particular video, okay? What it has, it has the introductions, it has the logos for every player, it has the draft picks of what Pokemon we drafted for every team, and it also has the standings and who's battling who, all that in one place. So, go check out the website if you are curious to see who's in the league in this ILL and who's battling who. Just check it out, guys. Check it out. However, Isaiah hasn't updated the rosters or the standings as of lately. He's been, you know, procrastinating. I don't know. That's my guess. But Isaiah, you have one job. And, yeah, he's busy too and all that. But even still, it's better to update this thing regularly so you don't confuse people. So yes, and right now, for example, I don't know the official record for the Minnesota Monstrosses because he hasn't updated the website yet. So, um, I know my record is two wins, two losses. Last week and the week before, we faced the Boston Bear Kick and the Venus Venusaurus. We suffered our second loss to the Venus Venusaurus last week. And Right now, we have what? We have week 5, week 6, and week 7 left. And we can still make the playoffs if we can win week 5, week 6, and week 7. So, and like last week was not a good week for us. If you have not seen the Wi-Fi battle between the San Francisco Swampers and the Venus Venusaurus, go check it out. Okay? So... We're going to take this analysis video really seriously. It's going to be a little bit longer than my previous analysis videos. I apologize in advance, but I want to win my final three, my final three battles. So. All right. Now, if you look at my roster, it's still the same. I haven't really changed anyone up. I mean, I've been training up different sets of Pokemon. Such as, I trained up another Gastrodon, who's a little bit more offensive. I am training up a different Ferrothorn, which I'll have three Ferrothorn trained now. I have Steel, the Ferrothorn I used last week, and then I had Thornton. But this week, I might train another Ferrothorn with a different spread. Um... So yeah, just training up different sets of the same Pokemon is a great idea for this league. Not only to confuse your opponent, but to just surprise your opponent as well because you use different sets and people don't expect it. Anyway, so yes, so my team is still the same. My Mega is Mega Gengar, my only Mega thus far. I have Talonflame, Ferrothorn, Gastrodon, Umbreon, Mian Shao, Gigo, Kiram Black, Behem, Flygon, Wigglytuff, and Avalug. Which I, I might consider making a trade from Avalug to someone else. I might consider it. Because I don't think... I haven't really used Avalug all that much. But I think I might switch out Avalug when the next free agency happens. Which I don't know when the next free agency is. I have to check with Mac, the Green Bay Pacheresis coach, on that. Because he's in charge of that too. Anyway, so, ugh, get out of the way there, you know? So, with that out of the way, we have to analyze the Minnesota Monstrosses, who's coached by Isaiah, like I already said. And Isaiah, I faced him before, if you have not seen my uploads from the summer. I faced Isaiah a few times there. And he's actually becoming much better at battling than he used to be. He actually got some advice from Mac on how to analyze your team's, po po uh, team's Pokemon there, if I can say it. He's been doing a good job of analyzing, and he's been battling a lot better 
as of lately as well. So this will be a very interesting battle for sure. Alright, so from Pokemon left to right here, we have to face a Garchomp. Now Garchomp can go Mega, and I know that I, I saw the battle between the Minnesota Munchasses and his last week opponent, which was the, the Tacoma Trevenants, I will be facing really soon, so. And I know that team is really good, so. And I saw um, Garchomp use some a variety of different moves, such as Fire Fang for coverage. He has, I think, Earthquake. He can go for Dragon Claw or Outrage. I didn't see the whole battle, but I know he has access to, like, a different variety of different moves. That is such a great sentence. But you get the idea. I know that Garchomp can go Mega, and I know Mega Garchomp is really powerful, so I have to go ahead and plan accordingly to face him, because... Mega Garchomp, if you let that thing just troll your team, that's not really good for the for any team, really. Second, we have Rotom Wash, and I hate facing Rotom Wash. Just because Rotom Wash can go for Will-O-Wisp, he can go for Pain Split, if, you're at, if he's at low health and you're at full health, you can use Pain Split to get rid of that damage, and you, you get the idea, right? Not really fun to face, and he's really bulky, he can go offensive as well. Just not a good Pokemon to face. His only weakness is Grass, because he's a water type and electric type. He has access to Levitate, which means ground type moves won't work. So Grass type Pokemon will be the best suitable option against Rotom Wash. Third, we have Forges, and Forges is of course a fairy type. His only fairy type on the team of his for Isaiah and the Minnesota Munchos is great special defense. I have a lot of special attackers on my side, which means okay, so with one with base one fifty four special defense, I have Gengar, but of course Mega Gengar has access to special type moves. It will be super effective against Forges, but of course Forges' special defense is really high. So I would like to do some chip damage to it when we have our battle. I'll have to do some chip damage to it. It will be nice to toxic it and force him to use aromatherapy to get rid of the status condition. That would be really fun and I can get some really nice physical damage onto it. Which means physical defense is not really high either. So. That would be really interesting. I cannot wait to face Forges. It'll be just a, an interesting experience. Um, Cloyster. Cloyster can run Shell Smash. I saw last week that Shell Smash Cloyster. I don't remember if he used it or not, but I know that Shell Smash Cloyster is really annoying to face. If you let that thing set up, chances are you're going to lose the match. So, we need to be really prepared for this, okay? After I'm done with this whole analyzing thing, we'll, we'll go ahead and figure out what our potential members will be when we're facing Isaiah. He has his uber pick be Aegislash. Aegislash, the sword Pokemon. Aegislash has access to King Shield, Swords Dance, and Shadow Sneak, which, that's the reason why he's an uber, first of all. And, second of all, he has also he also has access to autonomize to raise its speed. So if I let that thing set up as well, uh, that's not a really good sign. You know, that's not a really good sign. I don't want that thing to set up either. He has Gardevoir, who can also go Mega. Mega Gardevoir over Mega Garchomp. I it's hard to tell at this point, but I know Mega Garchomp right now has been getting a lot of kills as of late. For Mega Gardevoir, Mega Gardevoir is also really good, especially defensive, a little bit more bulky on the physical side as well. I still want to consider using Mega Gengar for this. Um, because, of course, Sludge Bomb and Shadow Ball are all super effective against Gardevoir, Psychic, and Fairy when it goes Mega. So. Um, he has Huff Grigus, Benet. And those two Pokemon are ghost types. And uh, of course, Coffee Grigus can go for Shadow Balls. He can go for 
Will-O-Wisp. You can also go for Rest. You can have the Resto Shesto. Rest with a Shesto Berry. That's also a strategy that he can go for. It's really annoying, to be tell you the truth there. Um, Bennett also serves the same role as Coffee Greatest, but the downside of that is Bennett. Bennett is a little bit more offensively oriented or than Coffee Greatest is. So, there you have it with that. Seismic Toad, I haven't really faced Seismic Toad all that much. Uh, I did face Isaiah before, and he used Seismic Toad, but it's been a while. So. Seismic Toad can go for Scald, he can go for Ice Punches, he can go for Stealth Rocks. Really annoying, I keep saying that, but yeah, it's true. It, all those Pokemon are annoying to face. Um, let's see. Seismic Toad can go offensive, he can go for Infestation to keep me inside the battlefield and not switch out. That's a neat strategy, I haven't really seen that in action. All that much, but it's also a new strategy for Generation Six. He has E Electros, a Scavalier, and Porygon Two. Let's, let's let's talk Porygon Two first. Porygon Two has access to use um, Eviolite as an item, and Eviolite will boost up your defenses really high, skyrocket high. That's just how high. Those defenses are, and that's just really intense, you know. Electros, I use, or I've seen him use assault vest on on Electros, and that is a good strategy. He can use knock off to knock off items. He can go for full switch and everything. I know what's going on with Electros there. I just have to be wary of the assault vest if he's going to bring it to this particular battle. Um, a Scavalier. Now, a Scavalier, I see it, I see it use, um, a sp Expert Belt. What, a, what Expert Belt does, it will raise your special attack and your attack, I believe, by 10%, but you can use different moves. Which means that you're not locked in one move. That's really good. But that's a very unique item on a Scavalier, so. Alright, those are the Pokemon that I have to face. Um... On my side, it looks like I'm going to use Gengar and Town Flame and Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn is a good option for his team because if I can use a Lumberry on my Ferrothorn, I can bypass the burn on Cofagrigus and Rotom Wash and Bennett. And I can use Power Whip to hit the Rotom Wash, super effective. I can hit the Cofagrigus for some damage and to the Bennett as well. That's a nice strategy you can use. I might also consider Rocky Helmet, but that's tough to tell right now. But I think I like Lumberry for an item. Town Flame and Gengar are a must for this battle. I cannot afford to not bring them to battles because those are my win factors for almost every battle. Unless something weird happens, I don't need them. Gastrodon is looking a good option here. I might use my offensive one in this particular battle. I'm not sure yet, but that's a likely good chance of that happening there. Um, I'm debating whether I should bring Wigglytuff or BHM. BHM is really nice because I have the extra uh, boost of special power in the form of choice specs. I've used Siberium, my offensive BHM, last week, and or in the week before that. And it's working out really well for me. However, I have to make sure that I have to live a hit because Behem cannot really take one or two hits. I might actually consider my defensive one, Alloy. Alloy, the offen or the defensive Behem, is looking like a good option here. Um, Flygon is a really good choice here because I can go Scarf, I can actually, ram I can actually run Rampig on my opponent's team. Once Gardevoir is gone, because Gardevoir is a fairy type. And also, Forges. Well, yeah, of course I have Forges to deal with, but I have Earthquake, which is a physical move, and I already went on with Forges, so don't want to repeat that. Um, Avalug is looking okay. I might actually. I don't know. Because I have 
my offensive Gastagon with Ice Beam. And Gastagon is really bulky on the physical split. So, and I don't see him setting up energy hazards all that much outside of his Garchomp or Seismic Shadow. He can run different sets of Garchomp too. Um, here on Black, nah, not really looking too bright here. I am, uh, Mia Shao. Mia Shao is looking okay. I don't know. Um, Ditto, I can transform into things. Just by looking at it, the only Pokemon I can transform are only ghost type Pokemon or Garchomp. Um, because Dragon is also weak to Dragon. So my selection of Pokemon I might bring are going to be Counterflame, Mega Gengar, Ferrothorn, Gastrodon, um, Behem, and Flygon. That's what I think I'll bring. And for my opponent, I will hopefully see Mega Garchomp, uh, Forges, Rotom Wash, so that's three. Cloyster, Shell Smash has an option there, so that's four. Eden Slash, five. And then a uh, filler for the six Pokemon that will be either Cofagrigus, Porygon 2, or Electros. I don't see a Scavalier coming. Or Banan. Or Gardevoir, maybe. I don't know. That's just my guess. So that's my analysis video for week five. And again, I apologize. This was a long analysis video. But I saw you said you guys saw this coming, right? I told you this in advance. So that's it for the analysis video. If you enjoy this, hit that like button, subscribe, and look forward to our official battle between the San Francisco Swampers and the Minnesota Munchausers. Hope you all enjoyed this analysis video. I'll see you on the battlefield. Alright, bye trainers.